Hey guys, Nick here. So I'm out at the range today and I wanted to do a little testing with the new and improved Alien Gear Holsters Rapid Force Holster. Um, they've made some subtle yet significant changes to the holster that we're gonna put to work today a little bit. Uh, I'm gonna be doing some shooting from the ground, testing out some of the durability of this holster and see how it does. Due to ammo shortages, I'm gonna be using my dry fire mag for training today. If you're not familiar with dry fire mag, it's an excellent tool for dry fire training to get all of your reps and practice in. Uh, it fits into your mag well and uh, offers a trigger reset without having to rack the slide every time. So it's a great tool at the range and away from the range for training. Let's get to work. Okay, after a few rounds of uh, shooting from the ground and rolling around transitioning to, to the right side or my strong side to cover my holster up and to make sure that there's no flexation or compression of the holster shell itself, it performed well. The, the functionality of the, the hood disengagement worked well and the, um, the ejection port lock, everything performed fine. Um, I can tell you right now there's a significant amount of dust and dirt in there but I'm gonna kick it up a notch a little bit to make sure that the functionality still works. Okay, I just grabbed a handful of dirt and gravel and dust and whatnot, and I'm literally just gonna dump it into the action of the holster. Uh, you're gonna see a lot of it fall out of the bottom, but I'm just gonna simulate um, you know, aggressive actions and dust and dirt to see, make sure the functionality still works. I'm gonna give it kind of a knock to get some of those big chunks out, but here we go. Glock 45, standard issue. A little gritty, not bad. Hood locks back. Function still works. In, lock, out. A little gritty, you can hear the grit grinding on it and the action isn't necessarily as smooth as it was brand new fresh out of the package because there is a significant amount of debris in there. But when you disengage the hood, it pulls forward. When you depress the thumb release for the action, it comes right out. So. Functionality, while it's full of dust and dirt, seems to work okay. To give you an idea of how much dirt is actually in there, I'm gonna reveal this here. So again, the hood falls forward when you press the button. Release the thumb, fire arm falls out, and you guys can see how much grit and dust is actually in all of the action in here. But that's it. Okay, this next round of testing is something that is, it's gonna be completely unconventional as far as standard testing goes. However, it's the best that I can do to recreate a real life scenario that happened to me without actually falling onto the ground myself. I did have an instance where prior, I was wearing an Alien Gear holster, the original version that came out a long time ago, the one that I previously tested, and I had a slip on an incident where I hit an oil slick and actually landed onto the holster. Um, I was injured, however the holster was just scuffed up, it performed well, it functioned well. I still used it for the rest of that year to come until uh, the newer ones came out and I began testing them. So the closest I can come to simulating this incident without actually falling onto the holster myself, which I don't know if you've noticed all this gravel or not, but I'm not really anxious to, to fall on this holster, is I've, I've got about a 70 or 80 pound stone that I'm actually going to lean up and fall onto the rock I don't know what the actual scientifically measured forces are. However, the, the mass of the rock falling from a leaning position onto the holster, it's probably gonna create a significant amount of stress and force onto the holster shell itself. So let's see how it works. All right, so I've got this to where it's gonna land on the holster, pretty much covering the entire holster. Again, it's just from a leaning position. I don't know what the measured amount of force is going to be onto the, the holster itself, but let's just see what kind of damage it'll do. The rock broke. Okay. 
It looks like there's some deformity of the holster. However, the action still works. Um, looks like part of the rubber popped out, but in an instance where you're gonna need your holster to function and still keep your gun secure, it looks like that's gonna work. Something to also consider is that there was not a firearm in the testing because I don't wanna drop a stone on my gun. There was not a firearm in the, the holster for testing to prevent flexation and compression uh, on certain portions of this. So it's something to consider that if you are on a fall with your gun holstered, that there's gonna, it's gonna make it a more solid piece. However, that being said, with the gun in the holster, the locking mechanism functions and the internal locking mechanism is still functioning and holding. When I release the thumb brake, the gun still does draw. Okay, I can still put it in, no factor, locks back securely, the hood is still locked. So essentially, the integrity has not been compromised. Uh, there, is, there was some minor flexation that caused a small rubber piece to pop out. However, the function and action of this holster is still perfectly fine. Okay, geared back up. You can see that the holster still fits fine. There's no factor in the function. It's still very secure, very solid, and the gun is still locked in place. Um, so far, it shows to be a pretty durable rig. Um, the improvements they made are good. Um, dirt and grit into the action doesn't cause any malfunctions. So, so far, this thing's holding up to the abuse. Okay, I want to reiterate that this is not scientific testing. This is just scenario-based type recreations of possible scenarios and incidents that I'm creating to cause stress to the holster. So what I'm doing is I had the holster suspended to a tree because we're country from a chain. Okay, now I'm going to take a portion, the largest portion of that rock that was earlier, and I'm actually going to hang it from the outermost portion of the holster to cause stress onto the holster. Uh, a portion of that rock broke off. I'd be willing to say that I've probably got about 50 pounds of rock left. So let's see how it fares against uh, the stress being put on the outside of the holster where this would be simulating hanging onto your belt and the downward force would be simulating somebody possibly pulling down on the holster and or your gun at the same time at a downward motion from your belt. We're gonna put the rest of the portion of the broken rock hanging from this. So we're looking at about, I would say a good 80 pounds of stone that we're gonna hang off of the edge of this. So here we go. Again, the integrity is not being compromised onto the holster. The belt hanger is holding on tight. And even if I add extra stress bouncing onto that, causing fluctuation in the weight, the integrity of the holster is holding true. Okay guys, so for one last torture test, we're gonna see if we can break this thing. Um, I've got chains hooked up to my pull-up bar in my garage, and I'm hooking the uh, rapid force on a carabiner in the same fashion I did to the tree to the rock, and we're gonna start adding some kettlebells, starting at 40 pounds and going up from there. We'll see how it does. Okay, so I have a ratchet strap, chain hooked on one end, Another hook hooked into the rat to the rapid force like before. There's not really a better way to anchor it in except right here at the back, which is directly at a weak point, the bolted seam. So let's just see how it does. So I've got a chain attached to this, and we're gonna work by putting a 40-pound kettlebell on it first. Okay. 40-pound kettlebell going on the chain. Forty pounds mild separation of the joint. Uh, quite honestly, with it being this weak point right here, um, I'll be surprised if this doesn't fail, but we're just gonna, we're gonna push it till it does. 60 pound kettlebell. All right, it's holding, no factor. Again, some separation separation at the back seam. Okay, I'm going to attempt to do two 40 pound kettlebells. Two 40 pound kettlebells. Okay, 80 pounds. Starting to get some more separation at that point and some flexation 
on the uh, the belt hanger. But other than that, you got 80 pounds hanging on right here. Okay, so I had to get a little creative because it started, these kettlebells started getting harder to handle. Uh, but I've got a 60 and a 40 uh, hooked up to this chain. I'm going to lift up and I'm going to put on this hook. So 100 pounds. 100 pounds. If I can do it. Lord, give me strength. The weight of the 40s on there and the 60. 100 pounds. Again, flexation, same as before. Uh, some flexation in the, the belt hanger. 100 pounds. Okay, I have two 60 pound kettlebells on it, so 120 pounds. Got the weight of the 60 on it, and 120 pounds. Still holding, 120 pounds. Okay, strictly as to not have to lift 120 plus the other kettlebells, I'm gonna use this ratchet strap, and I'm gonna hook on to, uh, I guess here, with another 40 pounder. So 160 pounds, 160 pounds. Okay, have the two 40 pound kettlebells hooked up together on this uh, ratchet strap. So we're gonna look at 200 pounds of constant pull on the, uh, the rapid force holster. And I hope I don't drop these on my toes. Okay. 200 pounds, 200 pounds of pressure you can see that there's a significant pull and flex of the UBL, or the uh, the belt hanger actually, I think UBL is Safari Land, but the belt hanger is considerably flexed, oh, and there's, there's significant separation at the back of the holster here. The bolt pattern, the three bolt pattern uh, that attaches the belt hanger to the holster is holding strong, so 200 pounds of pull down force. And just so you guys can see this. There's the flexation onto the holster and the flexation of the belt hanger. If you guys are wondering how this thing bounced back, um, it flexed right back into place. Any separation that was here is gone. Um, and the functionality is still there. Hey guys, so the Rapid Force Duty holster from Alien Gear Holsters is a rock solid platform. If you're looking to save a little bit of money on your purchase, follow the link in my bio, use the code at your purchase at checkout on AlienGearHolsters.com. Save yourself 10%. You guys train hard, stay safe.